take a moment. Uh, I'll introduce Paul, and then as he's up, I'll pray pray over our time and then jump into a good Q&A time together. Um, so, Paul, why don't you come up? Uh, Kevin, if you want to invite Paul up on the stage, love everybody to see him as, um, as we just take a moment to pray together. And then, Kevin, I guess you'll be kicked off slowly I'll into disappear. the background. Huh? I'll disappear. I'll disappear and I'll, uh, I'll take the slides with me. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Hey, Paul. James, Kevin, how are you? Good to see you, man. Good. So good to be here. Hey, I did a, I did a woo woo, but I got no voice. My voice is gone. And so uh, it wasn't as, it wasn't as it. cool it as... Uh, I felt the energy behind it. <laughs> amazing. Well, thanks, Paul, so much for coming. Um, for everybody, um, you might have seen Paul is uh, taking time with us tonight. Uh, Paul and I have got to know each other over the last couple of years and have an, uh, had an opportunity uh, just in the last couple of months to actually share a stage together in a few different contexts. Um, uh, me asking Paul a whole bunch of questions about uh, his life, his journey, especially over the last five, six years with Twitter, leading Twitter in Canada and uh, being a part of really big tech and Twitter uh, on the forefront of that in many respects and what it's like behind the scenes and how do you live out your faith as a man loving Jesus Christ um, in a context that can be uh, very difficult to do so. How do you do that redemptively heart, heart and soul for Jesus? And so that's going to be um, all, uh, all sorts of questions I'm going to be asking Paul. And before I pray, I also mention to everybody, um, use, use the chat too to ask some questions. Um, but what I'd ask you to do is not ask them during our talk, but hang on to them, write them down, take a note on them. And then when Paul and I are finished our Q&A, um, uh, we can use the time to uh, do Q&A. There's actually a button called Q&A. Um, so not in the chat, but in the Q&A button, um, you can ask those questions. And then I'll take a two or three of those and ask those to Paul. Um, if if I think that's probably clear. So. And any questions from you, Paul? <laughs> this, this seems straightforward, and I, I'm just so excited to chat with you. And uh, yeah, bring on the questions, and I'll try and be as open and transparent as I can. Yeah, awesome. Well, let me take a moment to pray over our time, Paul. Let's do it. And then, Paul, maybe I'll ask you at the end of our time to pray over us. I think that would be amazing. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Awesome. Lord Jesus, just thank you that you are the king. Uh, that you hold authority, that you are good and loving, um, that you are with us. Um, thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you that you are good. Um, and thank you that you are in the middle of this time in our world, a time that can feel really polarizing, that can feel like war and is war in certain parts of the world, a physical war but certainly a spiritual war uh, that feels very dark uh, at times and um, a culture that is uh, in many parts of the world, um, if not the entire world, very much lost in need of uh, light and in need of a savior. And we believe there is one truth and there is one way and there is one way to experience a full life. And that is through uh, believing in and following and sacrificing for the man, Jesus Christ. And so we want to put you on display, Lord, in our conversation. Uh, Lord, I take a moment to dedicate this time that we have, the remainder of our time together as a group. Help us with distraction. Um, any, any of us right now, the 60 plus of us on this call that are trying to do all sorts of things at the exact same time, um, maybe you just need to get us to pause and dial in on this conversation and listen prayerfully to what you might be saying. Um, we pray for anyone that's feeling um, uh, depression right now, full of anxiety or worry. Anyone that's feeling lost. Anyone that's feeling alone isolated on their own, feeling like I'm the only one experiencing this. I'm the only one. I'm Maybe someone here that's feeling like I don't have anyone close in my life. Lord, reach out to them now. Give them your truth that says you are with them. 
and that no one is alone that is in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that even tonight can be a, a moment in our life, particularly for anyone that's feeling that alone and isolation, that they are here a part of a form of community that cares about them and loves them, and that we feel and experience that tonight. Um, thank you, Lord, that you are with us and you will guide us by your Holy Spirit. And we invite you into this time. We dedicate it to you in your name, for your fame, Jesus, above all things. Amen. 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 Well, Paul, you know, there's this thing called Twitter that uh, a few of us have been on or followed over the last few years. And uh, it's it's been through some time, through quite a time here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it has. So, um, I would love to know what what has the last few months been like for you uh, like if you just take us you know kind of in a timeline maybe uh, around the elon discussion to now what's that world been like for you and and then even to express that like what's been that spiritual journey for you in the midst of all the chaos that's pursued because i feel like being an outsider it's been chaotic and it's turned my emotions and pulled on me spiritually but you being on the inside of that um and 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 knowing so many people that work at twitter and and being in leadership what what's that been like you know spiritually and emotionally for you these last uh few months yeah it's uh it's a great question it's it's uh it's a it's a it's a heavy question um mm. maybe the backdrop of of this is that um i uh I love working for Twitter. Um, it was such an amazing place to be. And I would say being a believer in, in that environment, um, you know, a lot of people would come up to me and say, how can you work for a company like that? How could you believe right. in Jesus and, and work in, in, in that kind of environment? Um, and I, I just, to me, that was just like the mission field. You know, being being mm. in a moment like that where, mm. where we got to see, you know, we we just got to see Jesus move in a place where oh. many people was weren't expecting him to move. And so for me, it was just such an exciting place to oh. be as as a person of faith, as as mm. as a passionate follower of Jesus. And so um when Elon announced uh that he was um gonna get involved in Twitter. I was pretty excited, um, yeah. you know, at the outset, and I think most people were too. And and uh, uh, but then I think you know that that sort of took a a lot of uh, you know uh, sideways turns and ups and downs over the course of you know this past summer. And um, he was buying the company, then he wasn't buying wasn't, the company. Right, right. Um, and so, as a leader navigating that, and as a person of faith, it's it's interesting because you know how could you how do you maintain optimism, mm. um, but also realism? And for, for me personally, I think what it did was it just pushed me significantly into a place of just, um, this is, this is all outside of my control. And, oh, wow. um, this is just pushing this into a place of trust in Jesus. Mm. And mm. I would say just, it required me to just move way deeper into, into his presence and seeking his presence and trying to understand, you know, how do I, how do I be a light in, mm. uh, in a moment that has a ton of fog and uncertainty in it. And so, yeah. um, yeah, I, it was, I could write a book on the last, you know, year of my life. It was just, there's so many amazing, <laughs> crazy, mm. wild moments. Wow. Um, but I would say I grew significantly spiritually, uh, in the Whoa. last year. And, it's funny how a fire or, or, or a difficult circumstance or a, a setback mm, uh, mm. shapes you and refines you mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and um, sifts you in a way. It sifts out the things mm -hmm. that maybe, uh, you know, aren't, aren't what God wants in you. It, uh, it, it causes you to be desperate. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you know, Jesus said, you know, blessed are the poor um, and the poor mm -hmm. in spirit. 
Uh, you mm-hmm. know, those that are th- hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so I think a trial is, which is, I would say the last year has been like a whole lot of what's happening with the future. Um, yeah. And even lately, you know, I, I got exited from my role at Twitter and, um, you know, going through that process, it's just been like, it's pushed me just way into just the, the father's arms and push me into a place of just, you know, I don't know what the future is going to hold. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I, I yeah. don't know, um, you know, but I do know one thing. I do know that Jesus is king of the world and king of the universe and that he's got this whole thing figured out and he knows he knows what the path is going to be. Yeah. And so I think for me, it's just <clears throat> as as I've gone through this last you know year, it's just been a uh, a refocusing you know, when you go to the eye doctor and you, you get your eyes tested and you get the lenses that just right. bring things into focus. For me, the last year and a half has been that spiritually. It's been mm. this incredible refocusing of the image of Jesus and mm. just a, a desperate, um, a desperate seeking. Uh, and which, you know, um, I, I don't know that I had at the level that I've had recently. Whoa. So, yeah. Well, it's like, uh, too, like the word talks about suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. You know, and I think the way that works is suffering produces perseverance because like in the midst of that suffering, you could you could peace out and that suffering can take you down a really dark path. Or you look at it and you go, this is the opportunity I can meet God. It's like I'm working through the Psalms right now, and I love how David and many of his songs just is like, like how long, oh Lord? You know, he's like he takes that suffering and he brings it to the Lord. But by bringing your anguish to the Lord, the Lord gives back this presence, this this uh, growth in you, and that's the character. And then that growth of character ultimately goes, oh wow, this is hopeful because I know the Lord is is with me so it's so cool to see like this is this is the amazing like god-given journey god god's put you on um come on amazing man i think i think just to build off that i think a lot about just stewardship and if Mm. if everything we have in this life is belongs not to us but to to him our finances our our relationships our careers our our skills and our passions, yeah. you know, uh, our attention, all of these things belong to him. <clears throat> um, mm. I think about a, a trial that you go through um, a moment of uncertainty. It's, it's, I do think just this idea of stewardship um, mm. it's, a, it's an incredible almost invitation yeah. uh, from Jesus to, you know, to steward trial well to steward a trial in a way that honors mm. and glorifies him. Mm. I've been through thousands of trials where I haven't done that, but I've found that that is just, it's a beautiful, um, you know, call from him to how are you going to show up in this season? How are you uh. going to press into, to know me more yeah. than you've ever known me before? How are you going to rely on my presence for your, yeah. you know, for your sustenance, you know, mm. instead of, you know, all these other things, um, so that's wow. that's how I've processed the last you know six to eight months in my in my in my life. So uh, take us to uh, the moment to when um, it was really clear that you know Elon is taken over, and um, you know and he takes over. I know around that time when he took over, and there's that really famous video of him walking in with the sink, right into into headquarters. Something was happening, I know, for you around that moment that he officially took over. That was, uh, you know, makes me resonate with this idea of you're a missionary to tech. You're a missionary to Twitter. What were you doing around that time that, you know, was really impactful? Yeah, um, I, I feel like um, so much of the Bible is 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 structured geographically it's structured um, mm. with different territories and and structured with you know even just the poetic parallels of of being in bondage and entering into the promised land you know mm. um, the israelites going through the wilderness before they could learn obedience and walk into mm. the promised land these these sort of geographic parallels to 
to mm-hmm. to God's kingdom and the life he he's called us to. And so for for me, I, I I've always felt that there's a very there's power in you know, God is omnipresent; He is everywhere. But um, there is a dominion over um, geographic regions that I think mm-hmm. you know I I want to see the kingdom of heaven start to take root in. And so um, the, the quick story is that we had, um, we had a very interesting, you know, season where we were finishing one era of Twitter and we were about to kick off a new era with, with Elon. Right. And yeah. um, I happened to be in San Francisco at that time. And uh, we were hosting a bunch of clients down there. And um, I was there, I came in a day early And we had a day of rest, which was a day that was initiated during COVID just to, you know, to recalibrate and recoup. And um, Mm -hmm. I happened to be down there on this day of rest and I invited, you know, some of some of my friends and I said, you know what, let's let's actually let's actually go into the office today. And so Mm -hmm. we went into the office and we actually we were in the we found ourselves in this fascinating moment where we were finishing off one season and about to enter the next and we had the office um with relatively no people in it and we just uh we just prayed over the office Hmm. you know we just uh we prayed over it for the whole day and we prayed over the office we prayed over the incoming leadership um we just we we just spent time in that geographic building just uh Hmm. committing it to the lord Hmm. Hmm. and um that may be weird and might feel weird to people, but, um, and even though it may feel like nothing's happening, happening in the natural, Mm. a shift is happening in the spiritual. And so, uh, yeah, we had a chance to just, you know, praise, Mm. praise God and just glorify him, um, pray for the incoming leaders. Um, Twitter's an interesting company and that it impacts, you know, political landscapes. It impacts marginalized groups. It impacts, you know, uh, many, many facets of culture in the world. And so yeah. I think most world leaders are on the platform. And so it has an outsized level of influence. And so, yeah. you know, you got to steward that well, like Solomon praying for wisdom to govern mm-hmm. the people. Well, yeah. um, you know, I think those were the kind of prayers we were, mm-hmm. we were, <laughs> we were praying for just that, that this next generation of leadership just uh, stewards this well, and that, that yeah. God is glorified. Yeah, in, in some way in this next chapter. So yeah, it was, it was awesome. And we, we did that for the day and it was just such a, such a beautiful, special moment. And um, anytime you get to, whether you agree with your leaders or not, um, I do think there's something about honoring them and just, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, if you're ideologically opposed to them um, or if you're, you know, full line with them, Praying for them is a good thing. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I, I would just say that's a great Pray habit to get into. Pray, yeah. Praying for your leaders, giving, praying for godly wisdom yeah. uh, to descend upon them, to protect them. Um, so that's what we were doing. I know there's um, Christian uh, groups, a part of a lot of the major tech companies. So I know you were involved and in, with Christians at Twitter and there's Christians at Facebook and uh there's Christians at Google and Apple Christian Fellowship. And what's really cool is um, in starting getting into this world of faith tech six years ago, I met uh, a lot of the believers that love Jesus at, at Facebook. And I remember once they said, yeah, we do a weekly prayer walk throughout the building. We just meet over lunch. We'll walk, pray all throughout the campus. And we always end up in front of Mark Zuckerberg's office praying over him. You know, and there's times where it's like he's in there working and he'll notice and acknowledge us. And we're there. We're just praying over him. And I just remember that. And then hearing you say that, I was like, man, just like at the least, we builders, creators working in tech, around tech, like praying for our leaders, praying over the space that we're in is like uh, something that we can all do that can have substantial. It's like, that's our like, that's our, you know, uh, the tool we have to have a huge influence, you know, bigger than ourselves, you know, in that sense. And so super encouraged by that. Also uh, aligned with that is tell us this journey of Christians at Twitter, because I know that was something that, you know, I had heard about and or last few years was getting going. What was 
what was that like? You know, I think give us a glimpse into like, wait, there's Christian groups, part of tech companies. Like, what do you yeah. do? Why, why does that exist? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> we had a group called Twitter Faith and um, you would be surprised how many people uh, are actually lovers of Jesus and followers of Jesus mm. that work at, at Twitter. And uh, some, some are hidden <laughs> uh, okay. and some are more, more out there. Um, and sometimes you have to just, you know, dig a little bit. Um, I remember a meeting once where uh, one of my colleagues uh, on the other end of the video call had a, had a, a sticker on her, on her laptop uh, oh. from, from a, and it, I th- I saw it and I, I thought it said, you know, some sort of church huh. and I asked her about it and I said, well, Oh, you go to church. Okay. Fascinating. Tell, tell me more. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. so we started talking and I invited her to, you know, uh, Twitter faith. And so I think like, um, these are, these are, um, <laughs> and I know all companies have, have these types of people. And I, I would just say like for any faith based people who are, who are listening to this, who are in a company that maybe they don't feel is, you know, a, a Christ centered organization, that might be why you're there. And, mm. uh, you know, for me, I just felt an incredible pull to just um, try and organize people just to, you know, to okay. do simple things like, um, you know, uh, pray, have, a, have a prayer session. Uh, I remember when Jack Dorsey was our CEO and we were going through some really tricky political decision making. You know, I think we could stand on the sidelines and have an opinion on all those things. Um, mm. but we just we just chose to pray. Let's just mm. let's just stand and pray for our leaders in mm. how they how they navigate. Um, and so we would get together and mm. um, and do that. We would we would have praise um, lunch breaks where we would get together and just mm. like literally just praise Jesus in on mm. on a video hangout with like sixty other seventy other people. Um, mm. We would we would have you know great debates and you know discussions on just various theological uh, you know challenges or things people are still questioning or unsure about. Right. And so it was it was a beautiful open ended community of of people mm. that um, were trying to navigate. Uh, their their personal faith and relationship with Jesus and and still um, walk that out with authenticity yeah. uh, while working at a company like Twitter and so um, and some people yeah, found that easy to do some people found that really hard right. to do so, right what did it look like to for you Paul personally too like how do you how do you live out your faith working in terms of like the day to day I mean even like what did it look like in conversations? You know, how do you bring up your faith in a way that, you know, uh, is kind of respectful, I guess, to the organization, but is also uh, obedient to the word of God? Like, how do you strike that um, and, and live in the midst of that? Well, what are some ways you did that practically um, when you're at Twitter? Yeah. Um, when you work at Twitter, every other colleague follows you on Twitter. <laughs> and so uh, I had like many people to work at the company following me on Twitter. And so I, I, I wasn't shy about, mm. you know, talking about my faith and, um, and trying to interpret the world through, through the lens of the Holy spirit and trying mm. to make sense of what's happening in the world. And so um so people, I was never shy about it. Um, mm. I, I wasn't always that way, but I, I, I think you get to a point where you, you just, you stop caring what people think and mm. you just care what Jesus thinks. And so I think how just do you sitting- get there as a, as an aside, like, how do you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like so many within our faith tech community um, would say, it sounds great, Paul, but like my job's on the line. If I, express my faith or at least the feeling that my job is on the line if I express my faith or like you know like I don't have that courage like you're talking about right now and I care I do like I'm concerned I worry about what people think of me like what's what would be your words to to us feeling that way yeah um I, I would say that that's a total totally natural way to to feel um but I I, my, my 
own journey on that topic has been one where um, as I've, as I've pressed into Jesus and as I've spent time in his presence in, in moments that are secret um, and I've, I've heard his voice and I've, I've, I've spent time and through that process, I, my own character has, has transformed and my heart has transformed from a, from a place of, I care deeply what other people think to, I don't care what people think. I care what Jesus thinks. And that journey has been, I think just me being refined and shaped and uh, chiseled into um, the likeness of Christ. And I, we're all going through that in some mm-hmm. stage. We're all, he, he is refining us all in, yeah. in some way to be more like him. And yeah. so, um, and when you actually look at Jesus's life, like he, he didn't, he said some pretty controversial things that people didn't like. He was, he was, yeah. he was not worried about offending people. He was worried yeah. about pleasing and doing the will of the father. Will and so, father. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I guess I, I got to a place pretty quickly where I'm like, I'm going to be sitting before Christ one day right? when I, right. when I'm dead and I'm going to, do I, do I want to say, but, but my career or do I want right. to say, no, I chose this, uh, in spite of my career. And I, I think God honors those decisions. And I think, um, I think he protects us in those decisions as well. Mm. And at the end of the day, it's just a job, Mm. (laughs) you Mm. know, we'll get other jobs and people in tech will find other jobs. And so, um, Mm. but I, I can't find another savior. And so I think for me, this is, this is a, just a, a, I think a cognitive shift of, not being afraid and not being mm. worried that, that, Hey, people are going to maybe think I'm weird. I don't care. <laughs> um, mm. I love you. And I do think love is evangelistic without being preachy. I think you can, you can love people. Mm. And I, as I led a, a fairly big team of people, you know, I, I think like I didn't, I didn't get on a pulpit and, and start, mm. you know, sharing Bible verses in the office, but I loved people. And mm. I, I, when, if they messed up, my hope would be that I saw the future version of themselves that God sees and maybe mm. not the mess up. And, mm. and so how do you, how do you have grace? Um, how do you have the father's love in decision-making? How do you, how mm. do you love people in a way that just people just can't, you know, love is a fruit of the spirit and, and love doesn't seek its own. And so nowhere mm. in love is it like, is it about me? And nowhere wow, in love cool. am I concerned about my own identity and yeah. my own reputation and my own, yeah. you know, dignity. Um, it's all about him and others. And so I think that's, that's just a choice. Um, and at some point, you know, like, w- I guess we all have to decide, like, how much do we care about the opinions of others? Right. Uh, and I got to a place where I just didn't. And uh, I mean, I don't want people to hate me. I want people to yeah. hear it and receive it. But I'm also, it doesn't, it shouldn't steer my decision making. If that makes <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go to the group Q&A and one, one last question from me. So if anyone has questions, go, go to the Q&A button, start putting them in. Um, and you can also vote one up um, if you're like, oh, that resonates with me. But um, practically too, like if you're sitting down with a colleague, you're at work. And like, how do you, and you're like, I want, I want people to know that the love I have for them comes from my love for Jesus. But yeah, I don't want to do it in a way that is, you know, uh, on a, you know, on a, on a soapbox kind of idea, but I still want people to know, like, how did you do that in ways practically with people and even kind of one-on-one sessions that, you know, where you open up the door for amazing stuff to happen through the, through the Holy spirit. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, just listening to the Holy spirit in those moments Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, actually asking as you're, as you're in dialogue with some, someone oftentimes, and if it's a one-on-one, I would be asking God, reveal something to me, Holy Spirit, reveal something to me about this person, reveal Mm -hmm. what you're doing in their life, share with me how, how, what they need to hear, give me a word Mm -hmm. for them. And so I'm, I'm asking the Holy Spirit. And while that conversation is happening, and and while we're there, and there's been many times where I would say I've, 
I've heard, um, I felt something. And so, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's this one scenario where I was, I was on a call with a colleague and I could sense something was off in the call. Just something mm-hmm. wasn't like, she, she just wasn't, uh, um, there's something there. And I could feel that in the mm. dynamic of the call. And I, I said, are you okay? Is everything mm. all right? And <laughs> she said, well, actually, you know, it's funny you mentioned that my, my hearing is actually um, deteriorating in one of my ears. Oh. And uh, I fear like I'm losing my hearing and I'm going deaf in one of my ears. And I said, uh, Oh, that's, that's horrible. Um, we, you know, I'm a person of faith. And she said, yeah, I know that. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, you know, you know, I believe God can heal that. Um, and mm. she said, okay. <laughs> and I said, would you be okay if I prayed for you? And this right. is like in a work context. And so maybe it's, you'd have to take a read on the relationship you have with the person right. if it felt appropriate to do so. But I just offered to pray for her in the moment. Yeah. And um, she, when I offered to pray for her, she said, oh, that's very nice. I r- love that. That's, I really appreciate that. That's right. very sweet of you. Right. And I said, no, no, no. Can I pray for you like right now? <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's, she's like, uh, uh, okay. And so I said, it's going to be super easy. We're just going to pray. We're just going to ask Jesus to heal your ear. And I said, you know, Jesus, I just thank you that you are the God who heals ear be healed in Jesus name. And I said, mm. see, it's super, super easy. No big deal. And um, anyway, I just said, look, you know, um, thanks for just letting me do that. Uh, I appreciate that. And let me know if you ever want to talk about that stuff. So mm. super not weird. And um, yeah, yeah. so this was this was like Thursday in the day. And um, and Friday morning, she she texts me. Come on. And she said, you'll never believe it. But I can t- my hear my ear has been totally restored. I can hear perfectly out of my ear now. Wow. So wow. I feel like God invites us into these moments in, you know, that we can, we can choose yeah. to, you know, play into, or we can choose to act on. And sure. I think it was John Wimber who said faith is spelt R I S K. And sometimes <laughs> it's just like right. stepping out into that moment that is risky and feels like you're naked and feels like yeah. oh, they're going to think I'm weird and crazy. And yeah. this like, this like, uh, Jesus freak and yeah. you just God protects us in those moments yeah. and he he loves when we step out that way and so I cool. think um yeah that's just that, that's like one example uh, where I, I feel like you can you can bring it into the workplace and yeah an environment thanks, that Paul. doesn't have to be weird thanks Paul some really good questions are coming in um yeah I'd love so Matthews asked a question he says how do you feel as a Christian about the huge layoffs happening in tech right now, I know Google just announced a whole bunch more, right? Um, as a Christian, what are some tips pro tips to deal with this? You know, all the layoffs that are happening around, around tech right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, it's sad that people are losing their jobs and it's sad that there's, they're losing their jobs at such, in such volume, um, Mm. at this moment, um, you know, what is, what is God doing right now, um, in the Mm. world? What's he doing with COVID? What's he doing with the economy? What's like, what's, what's, there's, there's so many big questions about what's going on. I, I, I feel like just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, Mm. you know, going into the fire, you know, God Mm. never put out the fire, you know, he, Mm. he never put out the fire, but he is Lord over the fire. And Whoa. he he was with them in the fire. And so, you know, I, I feel like all of this, all this stuff we're all kind of experiencing and going through is he, you know, Jesus is purifying his bride. He, he mm-hmm. is, he is, he's getting his bride ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. And through trial and through moments like this, um, it is, mm-hmm. it is causing people to evaluate what's important. You know, mm. I've talked to so mm. many people about COVID and I would say the number one thing I hear from people is that COVID was a season of just reflection and reevaluation of priorities and what's important. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a big sort of, there is a sifting happening mm. um, in the spirit where, where people are, God is, God is inviting people to a deeper 
relationship with him, a Whoa. deeper level of knowing him, a deeper, Whoa. deeper level of his presence. And the Bible says, you know, this is eternal life that you mm. know me. <laughs> and right. so, yeah. um, you know, he wants us to know him, not, mm. not just know about him, about him, but you, you mm. know him deeply, you know, and yeah. I can know about my neighbor. I can know what kind of car they drive. I can know yeah. where they work. I can know, you know, when they come in and when they leave. But until I go over to their house and talk to them and spend time with them and mm. eat with them, I don't really know them. And so I think mm. God is with all this stuff that's going on in the world. I, I think it's just, you know, God is just wanting people to strip out the things that are taking a higher seat. Uh, mm. in people's lives and um, and remove those high things to allow him to be the highest thing. And mm. Mm. Um, I think that's that's happening. That's going to continue to happen across the world. I think that's happening right now in tech <laughs> in a big cool. way. So here's a, a quick one around, um, we were talking about ERGs, employee, employee resource groups. So um, we got a question here um, from... Oh, where'd it go? From Sam. Just asking, how do you find this in your company? Um, and if there is none, any tips on how to start one? Um, and I can give a quick note too, just pre-Paul mentioning. Um, however, Paul answers it. Definitely reach out to us too as Faith Tech because we are really well connected with a lot of people that are running these ERGs. And um, I think there's actually some resources out there that they've written now, actually, Paul, some of these ER ERG leaders um, that I think you might be aware of, too, that are talking about how to do this and what what is happening in this space. But with your journey of being involved in getting that going at Twitter, any tips on this one for Sam? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, uh, well, at, at Twitter, there was there was, you know, 50 different ERGs um, yeah. across every you know, lifestyle choice and dimension and right. passion. And, uh, and so, um, and so we decided let's just start a faith one. Let's, let's right. like, there, there's, there's a group for common interests on every other dimension, but there doesn't seem to be one for faith, which is such right. a critical part of people's life. Let's just start one. So we just, we talked to our, you know, uh, head of HR and we said, like, can we start, can we start Twitter faith? Yeah. So we started Twitter Faith, and we just booked a meeting. <laughs> it was kind of like a uh, an interest gathering. Me, is there right. interest in doing this? So we booked one meeting to gauge interest, and um, and um, and we sent it out to every employee. We're, we're launching Perfect. Twitter Faith. If you're a person in a faith, you know, community, have a faith, um, you know, join, jo sign up. We're booking yeah. a meeting, and well. we got a massive turnout. So I think it can be as simple as that. It's just like mm -hmm. an initial discovery canvas. It doesn't have to be strange uh, mm -hmm. to do that, that. And then, you know, um, every other interest group is supported in the name of diversity. Why shouldn't faith and yeah. why shouldn't Christ? So I think that's the spirit of what, how we approached it. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it started small and then it just grew from there. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then you find leaders who, who want to step up and take ownership of certain areas and, you hear different passions that people have. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's like start. it's, it would be a, akin to starting a church almost um, maybe mm -hmm. not as complicated, but you're, you're just finding people who love Jesus. You're, you're gathering them together and mm -hmm. then you're finding people who can also lead and take on accountability and, yeah. and then building some programming around that. And yeah, yeah, I think yeah. all, in all of that, the core thing was just how do we invite the presence of God into yeah into a workplace that maybe yeah. hadn't really experienced that before. Yeah, it's great. Um, well, awesome questions, guys. I know there's some more there. Um, there's ones around like, I think maybe the last one I'll ask too is uh, this one here, if you could do, if there's a way to answer it somewhat briefly, but how do you navigate being more open about your faith in a remote culture that views Christianity as exclusive and weird? And maybe that's a bit almost so you could summarize some of uh, how we've been sharing. Um, I feel like we've touched on some answers maybe around that um, more broadly, but any thoughts the, the, on that question? Yeah, the short answer is I would just pray for God to open up an opportunity. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God opened up an opportunity today for me to have a conversation with someone about you. Well, um, yeah. And just, you know, as you're in your, Good. your video calls throughout your day, God will present an opportunity to do it. And then it'll be your choice to jump in on, yeah. <laughs> on that. <laughs> so that would be one. Well, you know why I love that answer though, Paul, in all honesty, because for me, my mind's always like, well, what's the like practical one, two, three step on how we actually do that in our day. And I think that's not wrong to start thinking of those things, but you're like, start in a posture of prayer and just ask like, God, provide an opportunity today. God, provide an opportunity today. And like, if you're meeting with somebody, pray over that meeting. You're, you're about to code, pray over the code you're about to work on. Like if that posture of prayer, what you keep coming back to, Paul, is like inviting the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit to uh, to be a part of the whole day. For me, the year, the word for my year is dedication. Um, and I like dedicate, dedicate these things to the Lord. And it's like, dedicate your day to the Lord. And, uh, you know, that's just the posture I'm hearing from you, man. Paul, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you carving out time today to do this. Um, I would love if you, you could just finish by praying over over all of us on this call and i'll invite kevin back up there's 72 of us on this call right now um and and just before you pray paul um you were answering a question two or three questions ago and and something this came uh over over me that was um a hard thing i recently found out that uh, a lady did a study of a lot of men that um, commit suicide and she analyzed some of their last words. And the most common thing, the most common word she came across was about for men that were about to commit suicide, where they felt worthless, worthless without worth. And knowing there's 72 of us on this call, um, there are some of us that are going to feel worthless right now without purpose, without meaning, without identity. And um, I just felt like asking you as, as you pray, uh, uh, keeping that in mind over our community here, um, you know, um, and just calling and speaking to us that may be feeling that way today. Let's do it. Let's do it. Father, I thank you for this group. Mm. I thank you for the 72 that are on this call. Mm. Father, in Matthew 10, Luke 10, Jesus sent out the 72, Mm, mm. two by two, Mm. to go out and preach the gospel, to raise the dead, to drive out Mm. demons, to heal the sick, and to declare that the kingdom of heaven is here. God, I just Mm. just pray right now that you will anoint these 72, Mm. that your breath will just be all over them that they will feel the presence of the almighty God, that you will mark them today, Jesus, that you will shift in their hearts and in their spirits, something that pulls them more towards you, God. God, I just thank you for the army that you are assembling here right now, the 72 of strong warriors for your kingdom. God, I just pray that you will just breathe new life into this group where you will fill this group with joy. You will fill this group with a new sense of purpose, a new sense of hope, a new sense that they are here on this earth for a reason. And they are here as representatives of the kingdom of heaven to go out into the world and declare it. And through their skills that you have gifted them with, they will bring about transformational changes in their communities, in their families, in their churches, in their cities, in their states, in the countries that they live in. Father, I just declare right now, total and complete freedom over this 72, that your anointing will be upon them, God. And that today will mark a day that 2023, all those words that were spoken about 2023, Mm. God, may your presence be with this group of 72 today. Mm. And may you be with them. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks, James. Love you. Yeah. Love I know. Uh, yeah. Love you, brother. And I know, I know we, if we were in person, people could like clap and everything. If you want to shoot out an emoji as our, our representation, look at that. See? Clapping. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you, man.